Well, I realize I'm a day late again. As far as I'm concerned, it's better a day late than a day never. So with that being said, let's move on to another episode of Bargain Saturdays. And it's time to talk about Princess Castle. And I'll admit that this film from Golden Films Animation back in 1996 is a film that you have to almost take my opinion with a grain of salt about. Because this is a film clearly aimed at a young female demographic. And I mean really young. Like, the kind that are still want to be a Disney princess like Jasmine or Ariel. Stuff like that. Because unless you want to have that sort of, you know, role growing up in your life, you know, back when you are little, you're probably not going to find too much to be had in Princess Castle. Because that's basically all Claire's entire story arcs about. Her daydream about, you know, becoming a princess and being whisked off to a magical land with a magical dream sapphire that will let you control basically the entire universe or the entire planet Earth. They're a bit inconsistent about that, which bugs me, because let's face it, taking over the entire universe with a magical rock is a bit outlandish, but it's definitely more impressive than conquering just one planet with a magical rock. I mean, come on, I expect a lot out of magical rocks, considering how many RPGs I've played. I'll never tell you... All you want is to rule the universe with your wicked reign of darkness and cruelty. That will keep Sister Carlotta from having the power to rule all of mankind. So, yeah, the magical sapphire, you know, at the heart of the story does seem a bit inconsistent with what it can do exactly. I mean, we know it can apparently, um, cure curses, turn people to stone, turn people... I don't know, actually, no, the evil sister turns people into inanimate objects, I suppose without having control of the Dream Sapphire, but one does have to wonder how she did that, but apparently the Dream Sapphire can instantly reverse this if it's put, you know, in the heart of the castle. Though if it could do that, why would you ever take it out of the castle and where it's located, you know, for their, like, puzzle-like solution? Like, yeah, this is the heart of castle, and this is where the dream sapphire goes. Like, never remove this. It protects us from magical curses. Like, you think it'd be, like, bolted in place or something. Like, you'd never be able to get to it. Or, like, once this thing's secured, you never touch it again. But, yeah, we, we got a story about a magical MacGuffin. And a rescue operation, because Claire is supposed to be watching her little sister, Caitlin, because apparently their mom thought it would be a good idea to leave a seven-year-old in charge of a toddler. Or an infant, as they like to put it. But considering how much she toddles around, I would assume she's a bit older than an infant. Though she's still apparently in diapers, so, you know, maybe the animators are just overestimating what infants can do, or maybe I'm underestimating how much they can get around with crawling and whatnot. It's been a while since I've had a sibling, you know, that was that little at this point. Though I remember when my brother was when he managed to trip and fall and smash his way into a glass curio and get pretty scarred up and my dad was less than pleased. We've had to put guardrails right after that. Sidetracked there a little bit, but yeah. As the story itself goes, eh it's pretty meh as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's just average. <laughs> I imagine it appealed more to little kids. To older kids, you know, and adults, like, you know, been there, done that. Nothing too impressive or original here. I will say the lip animation definitely gets on the cheap side as you get into the, some of the later parts with the crocodiles or maybe they're alligators. Yeah. Hey, looks like lunch. Mm. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm eating here. Hey, cut it out, will you? Oh, I'll show you. All right, Orlando, this I will. There you are, Crocky. I guess it doesn't really matter which, you know, but yeah, we have certain objects that can talk in this film that normally you, you wouldn't expect to talk, like candlesticks and stuff like that, because I guess they decided to take a little inspiration from Beauty and the Beast with the sister cursing everyone else in the castle. So some of them were turned, you know, to like inanimate objects. She had some people that are turned like crocodiles, alligators that, you know, she feeds people she doesn't like to. Which I have to admit would be pretty horrible when you got changed back. You're like, I ate five children. Or something like that. You think they'd want to kill themselves. 
And of course, the film ends with um, Claire going to a royal ball in her royal princess outfit. Though the movie's rather cheap on the animation at one point because they actually show in the backstory where um, the prince on the front cover here is explaining um, the backstory of how um, the evil his evil aunt came into power, and they show a clip of him dancing with um, Claire at the ball that happens at the end of the movie. So yeah, we got some cheap animation reusing, and we got lip sync issues. And a story, you know, that just isn't going to really to appeal to older kids at all, because there's just nothing really for them. There's no more adult-themed jokes or anything being hidden here, so... Yeah, all in all, I'd say it's a pretty skippable film. You know, if you're an older person, you're just going to be like, yeah, it's one of those little kid films I can just bypass, and not feel like I missed anything. Oh, it's a pretty forgettable movie, so, yeah, just just skip it. If you got a little niece or something, you know, maybe let them watch it, but otherwise, forget about it. <laughs> well, I guess I was a daydreamer when I was your age, too. Sorry, Mom. Well, next time you'd better keep an eye on your sister. What would have happened if she had wandered off? <laughs>